Well, this time ISRO has released fresh images of Chandrayaan-3 mission. Now, images show that the lunar far side area captured by the lander hazard detection and avoidance camera. Now, this camera that assists in locating a safe landing area without boulders or deep trenches around it. Now, during the descent is developed at SAC ISRO. Now, these are the latest visuals that we are getting and uh, these visuals have been uh, captured or images uh, have been captured uh, uh, from the lunar far side area captured by the lander hazard detection and avoidance camera. Now this camera uh, has assisted in locating a safe landing area without boulders or deep trenches during the descent which is being developed at SSC as ISRO. Now joining me on the broadcast is my colleague Harish. A very good morning Harish. What more details are we getting from the ground on this report? Well, remember, this is a crucial aspect of soft landing to mm -hmm. detect the exact area where uh, the lander will land. And it's very important to ensure that the area which has been picked up uh, doesn't have any boulders or even the uh, deep craters or trenches because then there is a risk of the lander toppling. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why this uh, exercise is being carried out. Uh, two crucial aspects here. One. Uh, there's already a rough area that has been identified, not the exact spot. Uh, perhaps with the assistance of this, uh, these photos coming in, the ISRO now gets to zero in on uh, where exactly uh, they, want, they want to land. Apart from that, uh, what it also demonstrates is ISRO's uh, uh, technological capabilities. Remember, ISRO here quickly pointing out uh, that uh, these cameras have been uh, uh, developed at SAC in-house uh, by ISRO, the lander hazard detection and, uh, and avoidance camera, uh, indicates the kind of uh, technological uh, development that ISRO has done uh, in every aspect of uh, space exploration. All right. Uh, Harish, help us also understand that what are the critical aspects uh, of the launch of vehicle and the lander that make them suitable for the Chandrayaan-3 mission to be completed? Well, multiple changes made. Uh, to begin with, uh, there is a wider area that is now under consideration for a soft landing mm -hmm. uh, instead of a smaller area that we had seen during Chandrayaan 2. Uh, the second is the changes made to the lander itself. Uh, remember, Vikram lander now has uh, legs which have been uh, strengthened further to ensure that they can withstand a landing of a slightly higher velocity than planned as well, unlike Chandrayaan 2. Apart from that, uh, now the lander will have uh, uh, solar panels on all sides, which mm -hmm. means irrespective of uh, uh, which way the lander operates uh, in comparison to the sun, uh, it will get energy throughout that mission uh, and it will be able to ga gather more energy than what the lander that was part of Chandrayaan 2 uh, would, have been, uh, would have done if it had landed successfully. That's another major change that we have seen. And ISRO also saying, that uh, slight change is done in the onboard programming as well to ensure that uh, if there are variations in velocity and other parameters, uh, the systems do not go haywire, they can manage that as well. So these are crucial changes made uh, to Chandrayaan 3 compared to Chandrayaan 2. All right, Harish, I will request you to stay with us on the broadcast because uh, now joining us on the broadcast is my another colleague, Shushri Chaudhary. A very good morning, Shushri. Well, what are the anticipated ban benefits of Chandrayaan-3 in advancing aeronautical engineering and technology in, in India? Yes, so Chandrayaan-3 uh, is uh, India's second attempt to uh, attempt a, su a successful touchdown of the lunar surface. And this will really help us in our future space missions because as scientists from ISRO have said that, you know, uh, uh, first after we successfully land on the moon, we can also look at uh, collecting lunar samples in the near future. So this would be definitely be crucial. And as Harish also pointed out that we have done a lot of improvements uh, over the last few years mm -hmm. and learned our lessons from 2019 to ensure that we do succeed this time. Well, uh, uh, Shishti, help us also understand what are the challenges and the opportunities that are likely we are looking forward to. Yes, so challenges, uh, although we have, uh, ISRO has done multiple tests and that is why it is confident. It has tested it, uh, its sensors and conducted a lot of simulations, but uh, space has many unknowns. So it is a lunar landing is always, always going to be challenging, which was also evident through what happened with the Lunar 25 on Saturday when it crash landed on the moon. So it is definitely challenging. 
uh, especially the last uh, 25 kilometers when the power descent would begin on Wednesday evening. Uh, according to ISRO, the process is going to start at about 5.45 uh, in the evening and would last for about 20, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So if all goes well, India could successfully land on the moon by 6, 8 p.m. But uh, uh, we have we have seen uh, how it happened in 2019. And, you know, uh, uh, if something, uh, if, if an error creeps in and the engines do not start at the exact precise time. So the plan could, uh, you know, vary. But uh, ISRO is confident and uh, it's much more optimistic as compared to last mission. So uh, we'll have to wait, uh, wait and watch. All right, uh, Shristi, help us also understand or break it down for our viewers that what are the scientific goals that uh, we are looking forward to achieve from Chandrayaan-3 mission, particularly in terms of lunar exploration? Uh, yes, definitely. So apart from the technological demonstration that yes, we can successfully land on the moon, uh, Chandrayaan-3 has uh, critical uh, scientific payloads on it. There are about five payloads on lander and two on rover. And uh, the larger mission is to really understand what what is the composition of the lunar uh, exosphere, which is basically the weak atmosphere on it, and its uh, soil. So the soil on the moon is called regolith, and the uh -huh. scientists are really keen to understand what minerals are there, how, in what is the proportion of those minerals, and how the atmosphere changes with the day and night. So all these questions are very cru uh, crucial to understand for any scientist trying to understand the evolution of the solar system, how the moon is formed. And it's important to note that uh, the moon has a very weak atmosphere. So it has preserved the history for years and years. So, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 has the, it has certain clues which can um, help the astronom astronomers to advance space exploration in the near future. Uh, they, uh, the, uh, once the lander uh, lands there successfully, the rover is going to come out and it will uh, insert a probe on, in the lunar soil, collect and uh, understand the thermal and the electrical properties. So a lot of scientific experiments on board and uh, yeah. Okay, Shristi. Uh, uh, well, coming back to Harish. Uh, Harish, uh, do we uh, do we understand and do we really know what is the major difference between the previous lunar missions that were being carried out uh, by India? Well, perhaps uh, the aim is pretty much the same to demonstrate that ISRO now has the technological capability of uh, soft landing. Uh, on an object or a body in space. That is the major uh, aim. Uh, that's something that ISRO wants to achieve with the soft landing that will uh, hopefully successfully happen on uh, Wednesday. Apart from that, uh, the experiment's more or less the same. Uh, there's one additional uh, payload that's there on the uh, propulsion module that looks at Earth uh, from the orbit of Moon. That's called SHAPE. That's something that's been added newly uh, to the payload compared to Chandrayaan-2. Apart from that, as uh, Sisti pointed out, uh, largely focus will remain on studying the composition of uh, the surface of Moon, uh, the near surface around 100 to 500 meter area around the lander where lander lands. Uh, they would want to see the composition of soil, if there are uh, rare metals in it, or uh, what is the composition of it. And perhaps it could be, uh, in a way, baby steps being taken for ISRO for a bigger mission of retrieving samples from Moon. Remember, that's something that would be uh, a major goal for ISRO in the coming few decades. But perhaps uh, what gets collected uh, now or what gets tested now uh, would be the baby steps for it. All right, Harish, like you uh, already mentioned that the major aim is to collect samples from the Moon. Now, what are, uh, how does the Chandrayaan-3's data collection analysis uh, going to impact the future course of the lunar explorations for India? Remember, it will do two things. One, uh, hmm. the area where this is landing in the polar region of Moon is something that hasn't been explored by other lunar missions. Remember, there have been several lunar missions by various space agencies, including uh, the former uh, Soviet Union and then the, then NASA. Hmm. Uh, but this is a region where uh, nobody has explored. So it gives you insight into a region of Moon that hasn't been studied uh, from the surface so far. So that's one aspect of it. Second, it could also give vital details on whether it is possible for countries to come together and set up uh, some sort of a space station on the surface of Moon around the area where Chandrayaan-3 will land. That would be in, in the longer run 
uh, a lot more depends on it not just what isro finds now but some of the insights uh, could help uh, space agencies from across the world to come together uh, to perhaps set up a space station there which